Lawyers and stakeholders hail the Senate as it rejects President Buhari's request to amend the Electoral Act. And Niger State Governor Abubakar Bailo takes charge of the All Progressive Congress, says the party's zoning formula is ready. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am known as a The request by President Muhammad Buhari to further amend the Electoral Act of 2022 by deleting Section 84, Subsection 12, has been rejected by the Senate. The bill failed to scale through a second reading on the floor during plenary, despite Senate President Ahmed Lawan saying that the amendment must happen regardless of a court order barring it from doing so. Now, the section requires political appointees to resign their appointments before participating in the primary elections as either delegates or candidates. President Buhari had said the section is in conflict with the extant constitutional provisions. Well, joining us to break this down is Jido Logun and Abboji Ataguba. They are both legal practitioners. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Gentlemen, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, I can. I can. Hear you. Ah, great. I wanted to be sure. Okay, so I'm going to start with you, um, Barisal Logu. The Senate is saying uh, that even though there's a court order barring them from doing so, they are still going to go ahead with this amendment, ignoring uh, Mr. President's ask to delete um, that section of the Constitution. Now, when we talk about a court order um, barring the Senate from you know, going ahead with this, is there really a conflict of interest here? I think that action was just emotional in nature, and we call it emotional ventilation, because the position of the president of the Senate is that there are three arms of government that are independent on their own, even though they are expected to synergize, to deliver good governance to the people, and that the judiciary should not be dictating to the uh, National Assembly. But having said that also, there is this responsibility to obey the order of the court, because whether you talk about the executive or the legislative or the judicial arm of government, they are all to function in ensuring that we have a regulated society that can deliver good governance. And the Senate president probably also spoke on a personal uh, position because what played out on the floor of the House reflected the fact that the House was not willing to go ahead. He is just one of the 109 senators and then we still have the House of Representatives and the others are saying, no, we are not going to amend this law. And then I said it, I think we discussed it also, that before the president signed, he could have probably insisted, and he has the constitutional uh, latitude, that okay, go ahead and work on this. And the position of the president, that the provision of section 84, subsection 12 of the Electoral Act 2022, that is now law is contrary to the extant law of the Constitution. When you look at Section 40 of the Nigerian Constitution, as I'm ascended, it talks about freedom of association. This new law is not saying they cannot associate. If we talk about Section 42 of the Constitution, it talks about discrimination. It is not discriminatory. They can still be members of the party. And if you look at Section 22A, of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended. It gives the National Assembly the power to provide guidelines and rules to ensure internal democracy within political parties. What this new law is saying is that as political appointees, you must resign 30 days, at least 30 days before the conventions and the Congress so that you don't throw your weight and the paraphernalia of office yeah. into the internal 
politicking of the parties. And I think it makes sense. And we may have the opportunity of making reference, or my colleague will make reference to comparing political appointees to civil servants, because we have laws in the constitution that says that as a, as a public servant, you must resign or step out of office if you are going into active politics. But political appointees are not the same as public servants, as defined by the constitution also. Okay. So here we are now. And I think this provision will sanitize the internal democracy that we need before we even start talking about the general elections. Um, Mr. Tagoba, it's interesting that the Senate overwhelmingly uh, supported this part of the um, amendment, knowing that it really is going to affect them one way or the other, knowing also that if you, because we've seen it happen, we've seen senators vie for governorships and if they're not given the ticket, they go back to continue being senators. But in this regard, it's meaning, it means that if they want to be senators, uh, want to be a governor, for example, as a senator, they're going to have to vacate that seat and there's nothing to go back to. So one would wonder why they would overwhelmingly say yes to this. Uh, there's a distinction between uh, a political appointee and an elected uh, officer. For the sen senators which you have referenced just now, they are elected. They are not required under uh, section 8412 of the Electoral Act 2020 to resign or to step down from their elected position. Remember that they are, the tenor of their office is, is a constitutional issue, is provided by the Constitution. And uh, the Electoral Act being a subsidiary law uh, in the hierarchy of laws cannot in any way uh, shorten the tenure of the uh, senators or those who are elected. Mm -hmm. So uh, it will not apply to them uh, in the way that you, 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 you have described because they are not appointed, they are elected by the people and their tenure is guaranteed by the constitution. But this may apply to commissioners who are appointed, this may apply to, um, let's say, essays and... Um uh, senior special advisors to other governors or ministers or whoever they are. Yes, correct. It's going to apply to them because they fall within the category of appointed officials. And this provision of the Electoral Act now applies to them that they must resign from their position at least 30 days before their uh, party congresses in order for them to be, you know, to, to be eligible to, to contest the election or to be a uh, uh, one of the candidates who's going to uh, uh, vow for a position. So, uh, in my in my own view, this is, is going to bring at least a level playing field. It's fair. It will bring a level playing field for all the political actors and those who are interested in vying for political uh, positions. Because in our country, you can look at uh, the way. Uh, I mean, but there's a concept of what we call uh, that of the incumbency, the power of the incumbency. That has always played in our politics. It has weighed heavily in our politics. And the senators, in rejecting that amendment, really were carrying on the voice of the people because there have been so much of talk, so much of pressure from everybody uh, for, for the political playing field to be leveled. And this is one of the provisions which I believe will level that playing field. Will this in one, any way um, make people who decide, whoever wants to run for office, think twice about it? Be certain that um, this is what they want to do before they take that move? Because we see a lot of people just randomly throw their hats into the ring, sometimes just for the fun of it or just to be seen or to be heard and not necessarily because... Um, you know, they want to, you know, get that ticket because sometimes they don't even stand a chance. So now does this give them some sort of perspective? That way we, we this gets to sieve out a lot more jokers from, you know, um, the people who yeah. are trying to run for these offices. Yes, this will indeed sieve out, I mean, those who ordinarily are reliant on, on the public, uh, public posts and who are reliant on, you know, the, the weight of their office to push themselves through elections. This is going to really affect them because 
once you are no longer in that position, you can no longer guarantee what is going to happen. And the loyalty which you command as a result of that office, I can assure you it's going to be whittled down. So people are going to take you know, a second thing as to whether they should proceed uh, to contest an office or not to contest. And now you really have to go down to the grassroots and ensure you have support from the people before you put your heart, I mean, you drop your heart in the ring. Mm. Let's, let's go further into um, some of the issue of the electoral amendments. I'm going back to you, Mr. Logan. Um, so, uh, so the former, uh, sp former Senate president has, had been quoted to say that, um, that we're not necessarily ripe um, for, you know, amendments, further amendments of the Electoral Act. Uh, he's insisting, in fact, that time is not ripe for further amendment of the Electoral Act. And I ask you, Mr. Logo, when would we be ripe enough as a country to further amend our constitution? I have spoken to many people who have said, I mean, I think early last week I spoke with um, um, Shore and he said something about you know, jettisoning that constitution and writing a brand new one. And here is a former Senate president saying, well, no, we're not ripe enough to carry out further amendments on our constitution. I think it's all about how we get things done in Nigeria. Look at this electoral act that just got amended. You can imagine how long we spent on it, the anxiety, whether to veto the president, or not to veto the president. And time would have, that would have been engaged in other meaningful matters. And like I said, the elder said it is better to measure 10 times and cut once than to measure once and cut 10 times. The president has been advised on the provisions in the amendment. So he could have gone ahead to say, okay, I'm going to assent to this. Please, I'm returning it to you. In three days, find a way of amending this. But let's bring a background to all this. You will recall that the National Assembly, in their wisdom, recommended that primary election should be through direct primaries to prompt candidates for election. And some governors went lobbying, went as far as lobbying the president himself, the Attorney General of the Federation, to say no, that we are not going to allow pri uh, direct primaries as the only way or prompting candidates. And it was thrown back that amend, and this time around, National Assembly amended it to include indirect and even consensus candidates, and now brought this new clause. And let me tell you where the mind of the National Assembly may be flowing. Some governors, for instance, may have political appointees for the purpose of sending them ahead during congresses and conventions as their delegates. And that's why you may be asking, why should a governor have 170 senior special assistants and junior assistants? These are the angles that the National Assembly is looking from it. And like my colleague brilliantly mentioned, in Nigeria, you are highly influential when you are in office. But when you step out of office, you may be scampering around for those who even follow you. Look at what happened in Oshun State recently. We are Arikbe Shola a sitting uh, minister at the federal level went to that stage to want, and wanted to scuttle the primaries there. So you can imagine that they all now... So if you know that for you to even be active at the primaries, you need to resign. Then you choose between having your cake, eating it, or keeping it in the freezer. Or you cannot hold to this public office as an appointee, not as a public officer. And you now want to go and be tampering with election. It's not saying you cannot be a member of that party. You are still a member. You can vote at the at the uh, general elections. You are still an active member, but please don't tamper with the internal democracy. And I think, in a way, the lesson to learn from this for politicians is that when you are a political appointee, deliver on good governance. And the works of your hands will speak for you, and you will be bold to resign and go and get involved at the primaries. But when all you rely upon is the status of your office, so when I come as minister, when I come as this, because some names have been mentioned now, you can imagine that it's been insinuated that the Attorney General of the Federation will be interested in becoming governor in his state. You know, and, and Amechi and the likes of them. 
So when they use, and you know when they move around, they have all the siren, all the money of the government. No, no, no issue, not be. We need to start sanitizing. And I think we have started a journey now into bringing the concept of good governance into our political. And before I step aside on this, let's look at what the constitution says concerning the extant law that the president made reference to. If you look at section 137, of the Nigerian Constitution as has amended, it provides that a person shall not be qualified for election to the office of the president if being in the employment of the civil or public uh, service of the Federation. You must either resign, withdraw, or retire at least 30 days before the date of the election. Is that? And for the National Assembly, you have section 66 of section 1. For the governors and the others at the state level, you have section 1A2. So these laws are already there. But the distinction now is, okay, if we have this law for civil servants or public officers, what about political appointees? I just asked now. Hmm. You see some governors having one around 70 and senior advisors, special senior advisors, at the expense of the state. So when you know now that it has to be with your performance, you create a level playing field, like my colleague wonderfully mentioned. And I believe that we are beginning to sanitize the electoral processes that we have in the country. So I do not see any contradiction in all this. And okay. for once also, the National Assembly is now perceived by Nigerians as not being rubber stamped. Okay. But I have told you that has been underground battles between the governors, the political appointees at the National Assembly. And whether we like it or not, by Section 4 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended, it is the National Assembly that is empowered by law to make laws for the peace, order, and good governance of the country. Okay. The, the, you know, and here we are now. So it's, uh, it, it's for me, uh, if they want to amend again, let them wait, and it goes through the process of amendment. We have about seven okay. to 11 processes. Let me go. But for to, now, let, let me, this law stay. Let me go to um, Barsa uh, Atuba. Um, a, a senior advocate of Nigeria, um, Ebun Agborua, had said that uh, he applauded the uh, Senate stand on this issue uh, um, and the proposal. Uh, he said it was commendable, but then he advised that the upper chamber step down consideration of the bill uh, pending the vacation of the court order delivered by Justice Equal on Monday. Now, according to him, Ms. Agborua is saying uh, that going ahead with that amendment was in clear conflict uh, with the subjudice rule which prevents the legislature from deliberating or considering uh, any matter already before a court of competent jurisdiction. He said, and I quote, going ahead to consider the bill obviously will mean that we are disrespecting that order. And this is an institution of the Senate, the symbol of Nigeria's lawmaking body. Would you care to comment? That was well put by the Leonard Senior Advocate. Uh, it was shocking for me when I heard uh, the Senate president, uh, Senator Allowan, saying that uh, the Senate was going to proceed to consider uh, the, the bill or the proposal for amendment of uh, the Electoral Act, despite the fact that there was a subsisting court order made by a competent court. Right? It was, it was the height of, for for, for, for lack of a better word to use, the height of rascality coming from one who should know better. The, uh, the Constitution is very clear that all courts created under Section 66B of the Constitution have the powers to adjudicate and determine all civil actions. And for every democracy and for every civil uh, uh, I mean, a country that believes in democracy, the rule of law stands as the center point or the lodestar that everybody looks upon. And what it entails, it means that you must respect court orders. You must uphold the rule of laws. Whether you agree with it or not, once a judgment has been passed by court of competent jurisdiction, you don't have a choice. The only way you can set that order aside, or that judgment aside, is to appeal the decision to a higher court. It does not lie in the mouth of the Senate president to say, 
he was not going to obey or consider dependency of a judgment that has not been set aside. For me, that was shameful. And for someone of his stature who heads the, I mean, the hollow chamber of the Senate, he should know that once a judgment is passed, he has to obey, he has to stand by it until set aside. Mm -hmm. Let me let me push on this issue. It's beautiful, um, and and just like um, Barstow Logo puts it, it's a good step. Everybody's commending it. But then, if we proceed to make this part of the um, constitution, we have so many laws in this country. By the way, you know, sometimes we talk about the fact that we need to make more laws. But I always ask, all the laws that have already been made, all the ones that are in the constitution, how many of these laws have we obeyed? in its entirety down to the last uh, letter. Um, so I want to ask the same question as regards this particular one. Um, I mean, we're in campaign season already and we're getting ready for another election that might be determ determinant of you know, what the next four years, if not the future of Nigeria will be going forward. It's one thing to have this law. It's another for it to be obeyed. How do, how easily will we see our lawmakers fall in line in terms of this particular amendment? Are you referring to the amendment, uh, section 84? Yes. Or which other amendment are yes. you referring to? Section 84. One, the, our lawmakers, quite clearly, like I said earlier, do not necessarily fall under the purview of that section because they are elected officials and their tenure i'm not i'm not talking by, about the lawmakers by, i'm talking about the people who these laws are made for it's very easy for us to have they don't laws. have a we choice have so many but then they we cannot. see a lot of disobedience mm. of these laws we see it all the time mm. even for court orders so how certain are we that this will be followed to the latter uh, marianne these people who fall within the class or within the purview of this section in my respectful view, don't have a choice. The law is the law. It's on. It's on bending, right? And anyone who feels that uh, they have not obeyed the law has the right to approach the forum of the court to decide the legal rights of. Uh, I mean, a, 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 an appointee who has contested without resigning his position. And from the look of things and from the intent of that provision, you will see that it is a disqualifying provision. So anyone who refuses to resign risks his, uh, his, his win at the polls being set aside. So uh, for me, you can only break yourself against the law. You can't break the law. At the end of the day, you will suffer for it because the law is going to make it, the court is going to make its pronouncement on the issue. Um, Barcelona, I ask this question because we all sat here and saw what happened when the president's aide was almost becoming an INEC commissioner. Oh my. Of course, the law frowns at what happened or what was about to happen, but then it did happen. If not that Nigerians had to scream at the top of their voices for that to be stepped down. So this is the reason for my question, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. Barcelona, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. That is also what is inspiring the National Assembly. We have had enough disrespect of the rule of law in Nigeria. And the crisis being created is affecting everybody. So, and that is why I appreciate the confrontation in respect of this argument. Go and amend. We are not going to amend. We have three arms of government. We have checks and balances. It is the responsibility of the executive um, to implement the law. So if there is any political appointee that goes ahead and begins to tamper with the processes at the primary level, it should be called to order. Remove Section 15, subsection 5 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended, stipulates like that. that the state shall abolish corrupt uh, practices Dr. Logo, are you still here? No, so, and what, what is happening now is that if you trust yourself so much as being influential, then resign 30 days before the appropriate time, then go and get involved. 
But if the juice of your political appointment is more important to you, then leave others to carry out the primary conventions and congresses. Then you will be you have to abide by the results. You see, one of the challenges we have in Nigeria in the political arena is the undue influence, godfatherism, different kinds also you can imagine. And if you look at him, there's this case of Ojoye and Onu, where the court held that political appointees hold office at the pleasure of the chief executive, and they are not public servants as provided for under the constitution. So a governor, for instance, that has 175 uh, senior advisors and different kinds of cadres of advisors, and you are going for primaries, and he brings, even if he brings 75 out of the, the 100, what do you think will happen at the primaries? But now, if you if you know that you want to throw your weight around, then let's see the performance. So I commend this law, really. And enough is enough. A situation where you are a minister and you use the paraphernalia of the office. Imagine if you if you resign as a minister and you want to go and interfere as delegate or whatever, then go and look for your own security apparatus, not the 18 mobile policemen that will go with you. Go and get your HELOC spans. Go and get, in fact, can you imagine that sometimes when we have these congresses and conventions, they shut down the governance system. You go to ministries that cannot attend to your file because there's a convention going on somewhere. All of them will be mobilized. We have to go and support for God. No, let's rise to the next level. Let's begin to have meritocracy. Let's begin to have deliverance from, from all these myopic and um, analog way of playing politics. And if some are not comfortable, then let them come back later to amen. But I'm so glad now that we have, you know, on, uh, you know, backstage uh, con contention mm -hmm. between the executive, the legislative, arm, and the judiciary. now on how to throw their influence around. And I think that is why the National Assembly came out to say, number one, the president cannot dictate to us that we should go and amend this clause. We have put it in the law. Let him go and abide by it. And as we speak, for the purpose of viewers, this bill has been turned into law. It's a law, so it's not subject to amendment. And that is what the court is saying. Don't mm. tamper with it. You want to amend it, go through the process of an amendment. Okay. And if they are so serious in that sector of our national life, you can amend a bill in three days. All right. amend in two days. It depends on how important it is to you. But right now, let's go ahead with our elections. Right now, we have delays already in the calendar and things right. like that. So okay. we need to move forward. We need good governance in this nation. And kudos to National Assembly. All right. Finally, um, um, Abodje, quickly, um, I'll just take your last thoughts so we can round up. Um, does this make the National Assembly, especially the Senate, um, look good. Do they have a pass mark in the book of Nigerians? Don't forget that a lot of people have been saying over, over the years that this legislature is a rubber stamp one. But for once, they've decided to step up against Mr. President. Uh, and, and now I'm asking, should people be applauding them? Or this is naturally, this should naturally be their position. Can you hear me? National Assembly. Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. My personal opinion of uh, the National Assembly has always been one that they are just a rubber stamp assembly. But surprisingly, uh, this time around, they have decided to change their, their code of rubber stamp to one that is more, uh, I mean, more receptive to the yearnings of uh, those who have elected them. So I, I will commend them this time around, but... I still feel that they have not done enough. They are coming, uh, I mean, they are changing how they have behaved recently, I mean, in the past, now at this time. It, it's, a bit, it's a little bit uh, too late for me to, you know, uh, shout uh, that we have uh, reached the promised land with regards to uh, their independence. I still okay. feel there are still issues which uh, they need to deal with in an independent manner. It, look at the way that uh, this uh, uh, proposal to amend the bill was rejected. You can see that the Senate president was so eager to toe the line of the president. Mm -hmm. He did everything on that day to ensure that the they, they yes will take the day. But unfortunately for him, the nays had the day. Mm -hmm. And 
this, this in my view, uh, is, I mean, I want to commend the rest of the Senate uh, uh, body, not the president. The Senate president okay. has shown himself to be a, I mean, an extra, uh, or rather an appendage to, the, an appendage of the executive. So I will not commend the Senate president, but all other members of the Senate, they have my kudos on this. Okay. All right. I want to say thank you to our guest, uh, Gideo Logun, Aboje Ataguba. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. God bless Nigeria. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we will be discussing the leadership crisis within the APC and what their plans on zoning might be. Stay with us. Then.